Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. And whether you're new or returning, it's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. This week I'll be making a bowl from a U-blank with intersecting strips of Sapili. I did a similar pattern on a hollow form last year and I thought this would make a nice change from the usual resin projects. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I needed to do was divide the blank into 12 equal pieces. To do this, I scored a circle as big as I could, then taking the compass, still set to the radius, I scored six marks intersecting the circumference. Then I drew a straight line from each point through the center to give me six equal slices. Now I needed to divide these in half. So taking the compass, I reduced the arc and I made two more marks to bisect one of the slices. That done, using the new marks, I drew a line through the center point. Then I reset the compass to the outer circle radius and made six more marks, beginning at the intersection point of the new line and the circle. Then I used the new marks to draw lines through the center, which gave me 12 equal slices. Next, I could draw the intersecting squares. I drew four lines. Each line was drawn from the outer intersecting points across three sections. Next, using a scrap piece of timber cut to five millimeters, I drew the inner line of the square pattern. This thin section would be cut out on the bandsaw later on. Now I had to mark out the two remaining squares. The outer marks were difficult to see, so I scored another circle, which set out the inner lines, and from there, I completed setting out the pattern. I won't show every line being drawn, but when it was done, I could clearly see where all the cuts had to be made. All done, next it was bandsaw time. To make accurate cuts, I made a jig. It's my circle cutting jig, modified with a clamp and a new hole for the locating pin, drilled 63 millimeters from the saw cut line. I'd previously drilled a corresponding hole in the center of the blank. With the blank located on the jig, I used the bandsaw body to align the first cut. And then with it securely clamped in place, I cut away the first piece. After the first pass, I used a square against the fence to align the blank for their next cut. This was repeated until all four cuts for the first square were done, not forgetting to number the pieces to keep the grain aligned. Next, I had to cut the waste piece out of the offcuts. I set the bandsaw fence using the 5mm strip I used earlier, not forgetting to allow for the curve of the blade. After cutting away the waste piece from the offcuts, I readjusted the fence to the full 5mm and I cut the spile strips which I would use to make the feature intersecting squares. These were then passed through the sander to remove the cut lines left by the bandsaw blade. Oh, 
sanding done, I then cut four mitered pieces of banding to form the first featured square. Unfortunately, I've lost some footage, so I'll skip ahead to where I sanded the cut lines on the U blank, after which I assembled the workpiece to make sure it would all fit together. The mitres all went together very well, and once I'd realised the four rough cuts were upside down, I moved on to the glue up. My glue of choice is Type Bond 2. This was liberally applied to all of the pieces, and having done this type of project before, I can honestly say you need to apply more than you think. The end grain in particular will soak it up, leaving dry joints if you're not careful. Once the glue was done, I used two hose clamps to hold it all together and to keep the joints nice and tight. Whilst clamping, I had to make sure things didn't move out of alignment, but once done, I left it on a level surface to cure for 24 hours. It's the next day and the glue has cured, so I can make the next set of cuts. After removing the hose clamps and a bit of clean up to remove the excess glue, I place the blank on the cutting jig and use the bandsaw body to align the first cut on the next square. Then it was a simple case of removing the four off cuts using the tri-square to set up the next position. Next I cut off the waste strip from each of the off cuts. The cut lines then needed to be sanded to remove the ridges left by the bandsaw blade. To do this I used the Triton oscillating belt sander with an 80 grit belt. This made short work of smoothing the surfaces ready for the glue up. Then I cut and mitered the Sapili banding strips using the miter saw. The stop was preset from the day before, so this went very well. And after a test fit to make sure everything lined up, I could do the glue up. Same as before, making sure I got all the surfaces well covered with Type Bond 2. All glued up, I used the hose clamps to hold it all together and tighten the joints up, again making sure the pieces stayed in alignment. After a final check, I brushed the glue in to help it cure evenly and left it overnight. It 
It's the next day and time for the final feature square to be cut and glued. It's the same as the day before, so I won't make you sit through it again. But to recap, I cut away the far off cut, removed the waste strip, sanded the cut surfaces ready for the glue up, cut and mitered the Sapili strips, and then I glued it all back together and clamped it using hose clamps and left it overnight to cure. Another day has passed and it's time for the segmented rim to be made. To start with I cut a piece of sapili, the size is 60mm by 30mm and I think it was around 1m long. The 12 segments then had to be cut, for this I decided to use the mitre saw as it has a preset angle of 15 degrees which is the angle required on the segments. First off I cut the first angle cut. Then I marked out 75mm on the long side and I used this to set up the stop block. Then it was a simple task to cut all the pieces. After all 12 were cut, I sanded each one to remove the raggy bits and then I tried a test fit to make sure the angles had worked. The angles were perfect, so I clamped it using a hose clamp and did a test fit on the ball blank to make sure I had enough overlap. All looked good, so I moved on to the glue up using more tight bond too, again making sure I got plenty on as this was all end grain. Then I clamped it using a single hose clamp and this was then left overnight to cure. Four hours have passed and the two pieces are almost ready to be glued together. After removing the hose clamps, I pass them through the sander to get level surfaces and remove the glue squeeze out. The sanding took a while, mainly due to the belt speed, so I'll just show the first and last couple of passes, but once done, I could move on to the final glue up. To align things up, the joints in the rim should line up with the corners of the squares. There was a bit of juggling to do, but once it was lined up, I traced in a line and I made a couple of alignment marks. Then I applied the glue, and once I was happy it was in the correct position, I added a few spots of hot melt glue, and then I clamped it using multiple spreader clamps. So it's now a few days later and the turning can begin, but first after removing the clamps I fixed the blank to the lathe, for this I used the woodworm screw in the hole I used for cutting the squares on the bandsaw, this should keep everything nice and centred. Then using the chuck in the tailstock I drilled another 8mm hole and I flipped the bowl around.
recovered the bowl nice and secure and held in place with a tailstock, I turned the speed up to around 700 RPM and began removing material. The rim seemed like a good place to start. Using the half inch bowl gouge, I set to getting it to round. This also got it much better balanced. Then I moved on to the lower section. This required a lot of material to be removed to get it down to the corners of the Sapili strips. I used a combination of push cuts and shear scraping, gradually working my way through the waste material. Early on I decided to form a raised foot. This seemed to suit the ongoing design, so I kept it. When I got close to the finished diameter, I turned my attention back to the rim. I had a shape in mind, a sort of drooping undercut profile, but in the end, I went for a much thinner upswept design, which would retain the height of the bowl. With the rim roughly to shape, I went back to the lower section, cutting away material, getting the shape much closer to what I had in mind. All was going well, that is until I decided to use the skew chisel to fine tune the surface. Using the skew I defined the outer edge of the foot, getting a nice crisp angle between it and the base of the bowl. Then I began blending the lower section into one continuous curve, but unfortunately the chisel ripped lumps out of the U, right along the edge of the Sapili banding. I still had a bit of material to play with, so taking the bowl gouge, I carefully cut away thin layers, stopping frequently to check my progress. And the good news was that the tear out wasn't getting any worse. After a bit more shaping on the rim, I sanded with 80 grit. This was to show up the tool marks, but it actually smoothed the surface and I could better see the full extent of the tear out. To repair the voids, I tried sawdust and superglue, but it only had medium thick, so the best I could do was make a paste and push it into the holes. This didn't work so well, and the results, well they always look like sawdust in superglue. So I had to think, and noticed a black spot in the U, so rather than trying to hide the problem, I broke out the black star bond. filled each of the voids giving them a good squirt of activator so they cured quickly. When it was ready I power sanded with 100 grit, being careful not to dwell on one spot for too long as this would just create flat spots which wouldn't look so good. Voids filled, I went back to the final shaping, this time using a 3 8 bowl gouge. I stayed away from the bowl itself and refine the shape of the rim and the base. The mortise was next. I cut the outer edge with the quarter inch parting tool 
cut the dovetail with a dovetail cutter and then I remove most of the inner material with a gouge and finally I level the base with a skew chisel. Mortis more or less done, I sanded the outside from 80 to 400 grit. Then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Then I applied sanding sealer, which I denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire grit. Just the usual single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Quickly followed by Wood Wax 22, a single coat buffed away with more clean paper towel to leave a deep sheen. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax, a single coat to seal and protect the surface. Now we're on the home stretch. With a bowl turned around, I can begin hollowing out. For this, I use the 3 8 bowl gouge, removing material from the rim, beginning to form the upper section. At this point, I wasn't 100% sure how I wanted it to look, so I left a fair bit of meat on it, whilst I started on the joint between the bowl section and the rim segments. As far as it goes, this is probably the most dodgy bit. I don't have any wall thickness calipers, so I was having to judge this by feel, and it already felt very thin to me. But I had no choice except to keep going, cutting away material, until I got a clean transition between the two pieces. At this point, I realised the rim still had a lot of weight in it, putting a lot of stress on the glue joint. So before making the last few cuts, I went back to getting it much closer to the final shape. This also had an effect on the design. I decided to make it a much thinner profile and consequently lighter than I'd originally intended. Most of the weight removed, I was more confident that nothing bad would happen, so I began hollowing out the lower section. This is where the featured banding began to show its final pattern, and it looked a lot better than I thought it would. I removed the centre support and the next minor problem showed itself. The hole I drilled in the base of the blank. I sort of knew it would do that and thinking ahead I had a plan as to how I would deal with it. From a plug cutting set I used the countersink bit to clean the hole up. Then I drilled a plug in a sparse appealy segment, and with some super glue and activator, I plugged the hole. Taking the bowl gouge, I carefully nibbled away at the Sapile plug getting it flushed with the bowl surface. And then I just had the final shaping to do, not forgetting to blend the joint between the two pieces. With 
with a bit of gentle shear scraping, I managed to get the smooth transition between the rim and bowl. I finished the rest with some work from the skew to tidy up the outer edge, and then I used a side cutting bowl scraper to blend and fair it all together. All done. Next I sanded from 80 to 400 grit. Then I applied the finish, the same as before. I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Next I applied sanding sealer, denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad, then Yorkshire grit, thoroughly cleaned away, followed by a single coat of Wood Wax 22, buffed with paper towel, and to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax a single coat to seal and protect the surface. Off camera, I trimmed the Sapile plug, sanded and applied finish to the mortise. But that's it, another project finished. And I think this is one of my longest videos. I really hope you made it to the end. I thoroughly enjoyed the process, doing a couple of hours each time. It was filmed over six days and I think it was worth it. The Sapile intersecting squares came out really nice inside and out and the colours, well they look great. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. Please subscribe, a thumbs up will be great and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.